explaining and understanding light and colour at sunset. Hi everyone, it's uh, <coughs> winter time in New Zealand and the time is just on 2.30pm. The current temperature is round about 15 or 16 degrees, so it's reasonable today. But I've been at the computer for a couple of hours and my eyes are sore doing post-processing, so I've decided to take a little time away from the computer and try and have a look at the sky tonight to see how we understand sunset, light and colour. So as we look above us, we can see here that the sky is crystal blue, which is not that good for shooting sunsets at, but as we move the camera towards the horizon, we can see this last little part here, just over here, has got some lighter blue and white in it. And what this tells me is there's some moisture just above the Earth's atmosphere. And you can see here there's some clouds forming and what the clouds actually tell me is that as the sun sets in the west behind the camera the temperature is going to start to lower and when it starts to lower we get that contrast in temperature from through the day to the nighttime temperature which causes condensation that we can see in these clouds. So I've been here for about 10 minutes and I can actually see that the clouds are actually they're becoming a little bit bigger. Um, so one of the things that we need obviously for sunset colour is we need the horizon in the west to be clear. And I can see some clouds on the western horizon and they are starting to build. So whether or not we get colour tonight will depend on what happens to these clouds. So the time is now 20 past four. And as you could see in that last piece there, the clouds were starting to build up um, as I was doing the time lapse. And it might almost have put me off going out tonight, but as we could see, the, the clouds were blowing from where the sun was setting. And what you generally find is that when the sun sets in the west, the cloud formation disappears or dissipates in the west because of the increased temperature due to the sun setting and reflected off the Earth's crust. And what that does is with the evaporation forming it does get rid of the clouds if the temperature's right despite it's getting cold. And we saw that at Mount Taranaki as well. And because these clouds are blowing from the west from where the sun's setting, the clouds will eventually disappear so that by the time the sun goes down tonight at about 20 past 5, we should find the sky will almost be clear to the east because the clouds have completely blown away and dissipated because of the increased temperature with the sun setting in the west on the horizon just above the earth. So I'm going to head to this little hillock I know and it uh, provides us almost a 360 degree view all the way around. And what I'll do is I'll shoot a time lapse and some video towards the east with the sun behind me to try and explain the effect that the sun disappearing over the horizon behind us has got in what we're looking at away from the sun and to the eastern horizon. So I'm about 10-15 minutes away from this hill so I'll go and concentrate on driving and I will see you uh, in a little while when I get out of the car. So I've got back up here for the second time. The first time I just got set up and the farmer arrived at the road down here peeping his horn so he obviously wanted to speak to me and I walked all the way back down after packing up and he thought that I had crossbows and firearms but when he realised they were just tripods he was okay so I came all the way back up to the top of the hill and it's a long way but it has put me behind 
When I came, there was still some remnants of direct sunlight in the top of the hills, and I was going to explain explain you through how that orange light on the tops of hills disappears, and that's direct sunlight. The last very bit on the top of the hill is diffracted light, and everything we're seeing now is diffracted light. So, in order to have colour behind us here, we've got to have a clear horizon off to the west. And I can see the west horizon here, and to all intents and purposes, it's fairly clear. And looking behind me here, you can see at the bottom of this frame here, it's starting to go colourful. And what's going to happen is, once the sun goes down in the west, the direct sunlight goes further up ahead. So if I tip this up, the blue stuff up ahead, the bright sky, is actually direct sunlight. But as the sun goes down, the light diffracts over the, the Earth's crust, or over the Earth's diameter. And the drama, the delicate drama that's going to start very soon behind us happens with indirect or diffracted light. And talking us through here, what's going to happen is the sun goes further down over that way, and then the colour this way will start rising slowly up the sky. And it'll start with yellow that you can see here, and there's pink below it. And the further down that the sun goes behind the horizon, that pink will rise up the sky. And it has started. Just on the horizon though, because there's obviously some blockage over here on the horizon beyond what I can see, and there is one or two clouds over there. That in behind this pink that will rise, there's what's called the belt of Venus, which is the blue stuff that comes in behind the pink. And you can just see that starting down here. So over time, this pink band will get higher up and the blue will come in behind it. And the crazy part about it is the blue is the part that's no longer catching any light from the sun. So the separation between the blue and the pink is actually the Earth's shadow. If we've got clouds, and if we're here on time, any clouds that are in the sky would start catching colour too from the bottom, and that catching colour formation would happen way above us, and a way over to that direction as the sun goes further and further over the horizon. So this isn't about setting up here to get a beautiful shot, this is just about trying to explain how the colour works at sunset. It's actually pretty simple, but I was delayed because of the farmer who thought I was out shooting and hunting his livestock, which is unfortunate. But, um, I'm wearing two coats because it's, <clears throat> it's not cold yet, but it's going to get cold because we're now in shadow of the sun and last night was minus two degrees, so um, I'll go keep moving and keep warm. I will touch base with you just in a little while. Now, as you've watched me taking photographs before, you know that I don't bracket shots. I wait for the dynamic range to lessen once the sun has gone. And that creates me less highlights and shadow complex differences to try and resolve in post-processing. So this is probably the kind of light that I usually shoot in. So you can see here, we've got some lighter sky at the top here, into yellow, into pink, and some blue down the bottom here. Full light, diffracted light, an earth shadow along this blue line here. So that is the earth shadow that's no longer catching direct light. And as I say, this band here will rise up and rise up. And if we get a really clear night on the western horizon with no clouds whatsoever, that band of colour that we're getting here is usually much wider and it's much more, much more intense. Still lovely though. Now this is a good example of stronger colour and the advancing Earth's shadow.
Now we don't know if you can see here, this little cloud that's running along here. You can probably just see the top of that now starting to, to go white on the top and it's happening because that blue line is starting to rise above where the little cloud is. And the little cloud is going to look darker because it's now in shadow but it's still going to catch the highlights from the sky above us. This is the time that probably lasts only for a couple of minutes and uh, if you can shoot during these times it's actually remarkable and just above the um, just above the there's a mountain table here and there's two little clouds there's one tiny little cloud just above followed by this big long one and even the little one now is starting to catch some highlights from the light above and it's actually quite dominant it looks quite nice lovely time to shoot a lovely time to shoot it's a stunning night So that's me done. A very quick video tonight. And uh, last of the light over in the west is just about to disappear. I'm currently on 1600 ISO here, so it's pretty dark. Um, some lovely colours behind us tonight, but not as strong as I'd hoped or predicted, but sometimes I get it wrong. Um, I'm actually being chased by another lot of residents down here. I don't know if they're farmers or just uh, landowners or occupiers. So I'm going to have to pack up for the second time tonight and go and see what they are looking at. They're probably thinking I'm hunting as well. So I hope that's been okay. It's been a weird video tonight because it's not really panned out. But nobody said taking landscape photography, uh, landscape photographs are going to be easy. And uh, it's pretty uncomfortable now because it is getting cold and I'm starting to fumble my words and starting to shake a little bit because I've been standing about in the cold, stationless, motionless, can't even speak, for about half an hour. So, quick video, probably. I'll put it all together when I get home and until next time, keep shooting, have fun, and we'll see you next time. See ya. See ya.